in the dead of winter, when it gets down near zero or below, we have a problem with our door. It binds and it won't close. And we end up actually holding it shut, believe it or not, with a bungee from the inside so that the wind doesn't whip it open. And this can happen for, for a month or six weeks or so in the dead of winter. So in order to fix that, I'm gonna have to go fix it right now by crawling underneath of the, the trailer on my belly. Tiny house, prepper. Live simple, live free. Hey everybody, I'm Bill with Tiny House Prepper. And you know, recently I did a video talking about why it's really cost prohibitive for us to try to add an addition on here uh, because the trailer itself doesn't have any footers or piers underneath of it and in order to attach a an addition to it the building inspector would require me to do piers under the whole trailer all the way around and uh, so we're not going to do that and we're grandfathered in we don't have to fix any of that but the fact that we don't have footers under there creates a problem and there seems to be a quite a bit of flick uh, fl <laughs> twist and flex in this trailer in the winter as the ground freezes at different levels underneath. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. So as I've said in other videos this trailer is actually just sitting right on the ground on cinder blocks. Uh, it's got piers you know of like two or three cinder blocks just sitting there on the ground. Now when I first bought it it was that way right on the ground and I went around and before I put in the skirting um, I went around and dug each one down, probably about a foot, hoping that would help, and it didn't really help much. I need to go much deeper. So here's what's happening. There's one right here, cinder block pier, just sitting about a foot deep. And then there's another one right over here. But because the ground freezes and, and heaves in the winter, this one rises up a lot farther than that one does. I think it's probably because that one is protected from the cold. It only has the weather, the cold weather hitting it from one side. But because this one's on the corner, it has the cold weather hitting it from two sides and so it probably freezes deeper. So what I need to do is dig this one down several feet. Code in this area actually calls for three and a half feet, 42 inches. I can't get that deep because I'm going to be on my belly digging on it, uh, but I'll probably go down at least two and a half or, or three feet if I can. Uh, now, what happens if this one rises higher than that one, it twists the trailer frame and then the door binds. What happens is as the right hand side goes up higher, then the door starts to bind on the bottom right there and then it won't close anymore. The first step is it'll close, but the door won't latch because it doesn't line up with the, the, uh, the door frame. And then as it gets worse, then it won't even completely close because it binds at the bottom. So that means that I have to stop it from twisting like that. I have to stop this corner from rising up. And the only way I can figure to do that is just to go and dig that pier. Now I'm not going to do it all the way around, let the rest of it float as it will. The only problem is with this corner and with that door, so that's what I'm going to do, just this one pier. Now it's been four years since I did this skirting, and I know that there's a pier under here, but I don't remember exactly where it is, so the first step is to just simply take it apart and take a look at what I've got before I can decide what to do with it. So you can see here what I did when I built the skirting, I just built a 2 by 4 wall and then just stapled insulation into it, just regular house insulation. Okay, so here's the cinder block pier right here. Okay, so here's the corner of the trailer and you can see the cinder block right here. 
so the, the frame sitting on it, a couple of wood shims underneath. So what I'm going to have to do is probably dig, a, I'll leave that in place and probably dig a footer up here right here and dig it down as far as I can get it. Okay, so here's what I've decided to do. Right here is where I need to dig the footer and I really need more room. This is really in my way. So I have over here an adjustable jack that's actually used uh, for stabilizing an RV. And then this is my four ton hydraulic jack. So I'm gonna jack up the trailer a little bit and then adjust this. So that I can pull these out. I'll go a little higher because this is going to settle. Now I can pull this out. And that'll give me more room to work. You can see this one's half buried and then it's sitting on one of these so it's about eight or ten inches deep at this point I have to remove all that okay so now I got the uh, hydraulic jack out it's supported on this adjustable jack stand I got this one brick out and this is gonna have to be dug out because it's half buried unfortunately the only way I can dig here is with a trowel because there's no way to get a shovel in there. So this is going to be a long, slow, dirty, nasty process because I'm going to have to go down at least several feet to get under the frost. I have been putting this off for a long time because I don't want to do this, <laughs> but it's got to be done. Okay, so now you can see how deep this other one was. This is an eight inch cinder block and it was about halfway up there. And then it was sitting on top of this four inch solid block, which I can't quite get out yet. There's the bottom right there. I just still need to dig it out. That's about it. That's as far as I can reach. All right, so I'm down about as far as I can go, as far as I can reach. Reaching through there and then down into the bottom, I'm about 20 inches. I really wanted to go further, but I just can't reach anymore. The old pier was about eight inches. I'm now down 20, so I've gone an additional foot. I hope that's gonna be enough. Yeah, so let me show you what I'm going to do here with the pier to build it.
Okay, so I've got this solid cinder block. It's four inches thick. I'm going to lay that at the bottom like this for a solid base to put the cinder blocks on. Then I'll put two cinder blocks on top of it. Eight inches, eight inches, and four inches. That's 20 inches. Now, I'm not going to put any mortar in between here. What I'm going to do is once this gets set in there, I'm going to pour concrete down here to make it a solid concrete pier, basically. And then uh, the piers in the past have had like a 2 by 8 pressure treated on here. Then you jack the trailer up to where you need it and you put shims in to get the right height. The problem is the shims are wood and after time they, they compress, they crush, and then they don't work anymore. So I'm setting, or, or then they have to be adjusted again because it keeps changing. So I'm setting this down far enough. This is right level with the ground. And then I'll just take one of these uh, jack stands and put it on there. I don't have the jack, the turning part here, but that way then I'll be able to adjust uh, infinitely without worrying about those uh, shims crushing and I'll be able to go in and adjust the height easily. So I think that's going to work much better. That way if I have to make adjustments I can do it easily instead of jacking the thing up and then putting shims under it I can just adjust this. So here's the top of the jack stand that I was talking about and it can be easily adjusted. That was not easy.
So I've got the concrete poured, got the jack stand here. <clears throat> now because I wasn't able to go down as far as I had hoped, I only went down 20 inches, that's all I could reach. So I'm adding this extra insulation, this adds R5. Maybe that'll make a little bit of difference. In keeping the frost from going as deep. So I think I'm good to go. I'm ready to uh, to fill in the, the skirting again. So now I need to re-insulate before I put the skirting back on. When I took this out, I discovered that the original fiberglass insulation that I had put in there isn't really holding up as well as I had hoped. There is some moisture underneath of there coming up through the ground, and it's just it's not it's not maintaining and holding up as well as I'd hoped. So I decided to use some of this stuff instead. This is, you know, impervious to water. It's not going to break down. Um, now, this is R5. It's one inch. I wanted to buy two inch thick, which is R10, but when I went to Lowe's, for some reason, all they had was the one inch. They, they, the whole rack was out of the two inch. I don't know why. I guess, you know, with the bad weather this year and the grand solar minimum, I guess they just weren't able to plant enough this year. What? So, what I'm going to do is double this up. By putting in two pieces instead of just one, I'll get the R10 that I had hoped. Very fast and easy. Much easier than getting that fiberglass insulation all over you, Dick. So I'll just put in another layer of this and then I'll put the skirting back on. So now I got the insulation in place and I really like that how this works. It actually works much better than the fiberglass insulation. The only use, the reason I used the fiberglass in the beginning because this costs at least twice as much. And now I wish I had made that investment and used this all the way around. So now that I've got that, I just got to put the, the, the skirting back and this project will be done. Well, I've got it all buttoned up again. This project is finished. Got a fly around my head. <laughs> this project is finished and I'm very happy because, like I said at the beginning, I've been dreading this project for a long time. Now it's done and uh, hopefully it'll do the job. Now let me give you just a little bit of perspective of what I've done here. In the video that I did last week about uh, adding an addition to the trailer, I talked about that I wouldn't be able to do that unless I actually put piers underneath of the trailer. The building inspector wouldn't allow me to attach a permanent um, building to the trailer unless the trailer was tied down in pro proper piers so it doesn't heave. And that would mean doing at least 10 piers all the way around. Now the requirement there is 42 inches deep which is just over just over a meter for um, anyway um, I only went 20 inches this is because as far as my arm would reach um, and I couldn't get any kind of tools in there to dig other any other way because there was only that much space underneath the, between the trailer and the and the ground so 20 inches is just only about half of what's actually required um, I'm hoping that even if it doesn't completely stop the heaving, it's going to make a major difference so that at least my door will close. I may do a, a report in January when I see how it's working to let you guys know. But uh, <clears throat> the piers also would have been, by code, would have been required to be two feet by two feet. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now this is the cinder block that I used. It's eight inches by 16 inches. So by code, I would have had to build this instead of 16, I would have had to go out 24 inches, which is all the way out here, adding, adding that extra distance. And then this would have had to be all the way out here. 
So here, here, you can see that that's a huge amount of volume I would have had to, additional volume I would have had to dig out probably at least three times as much. A whole lot more work, a whole lot more difficulty. And then like I said, I only went down 20 inches. I would have been required to go down 42. So, there's 20 inches right below my knee. Here's 42, about at my belly button. 20, 42, 20, 42, 20, 42. See how much more digging that would have been? See why I was reluctant to do that? Well, I don't even know if it would be possible to do 10 of those. So I'm just happy to have this one dug. Like I said, I'll let you know in a few months this winter how it actually worked. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've liked it, please like it. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Neighbors. <laughs> and uh, you be blessed. And remember, live simple, live free. We'll see you next time.